Hisane Habre has the distinction of being the least known of the 20th century's most brutal dictators. He tortured and killed the people of Chad for eight years before fleeing in 1990. In a new film on PBS World, The Dictator Hunter, the son of a Holocaust survivor teams up with a Chadian survivor in an effort to bring Habre to justice. If you kill one person, you go to jail. You kill 40 people, they put you in an insane asylum. You kill 40,000 people, you get a comfortable exile with your bank account in another country. And, and that's what we want to change here. Uh, we want to break that cycle in which people, in which leaders brutalize their people, uh, uh, empty out their treasury, and just go next door and, and live comfortably. This is Hissen Habre, who ruled Chad from 1982 to 1990, who's accused of thousands of political killings, of systematic torture, of campaigns of ethnic cleansing. And I've been working for seven years with his victims uh, to bring him to trial. He used to be in Chad, uh, then he fled to Senegal. Hissen Habre lives in two villas uh, on the ocean in luxury. When we sat down after the Pinochet case, we realized that we had a new tool uh, to bring to justice uh, those dictators and tyrants who seem to be out of the reach of justice. This case has the potential to set a historical precedent because it doesn't depend on the United Nations or the International Criminal Court. The Hissen Habre case is being uh, driven by the victims. The first covert operation of the Ronald Reagan era was putting Hissen Habre into power because he was against Gaddafi. And the U.S. Uh, wanted, in the words of Secretary of State Alexander Haig, to bloody Gaddafi's nose. And he defeated the Libyans. This is a man who was educated at the best schools in Paris. He's very good looking. I mean, he's very charismatic. He doesn't seem like the kind of a guy who has a prison in his backyard, you know, where people are dying. He also established a police state in Chad, kind of uh, 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 his personal Gestapo, the, the DDS. In the South, it was mostly Christian who were killed. But then in 1987, Hissen Habre went after Muslim tribes in, in the north and northeast of Chad uh, when their leaders uh, became disaffected with his rule. So this, 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 the, the, the cell was that high? There was a hundred watt. There was a 100 watt light bulb. So that's how come many people went blind. For two and a half years, it was as, as if my head was, was exploding from, from, from suffering. So I felt like if God would allow me to survive, um, that I, I couldn't just let, let this go. I had to do something. And I prefer that to be killed than to give up this fight. This is Suleiman Gengeng. He almost died in jail and became practically blind. Then he did something extraordinary. He fought back by organizing the victims. He's the real motor behind the Habre case. 